Hello and welcome back to this tutorial on creating a simple PHP strategy game. In this part we're mainly going to quickly finish up the registration page and then we're going to be moving into styling the website and getting that set up for further pages and we may be looking into the login page and how that's going to work in this tutorial. If not, it'll be in the next tutorial. So right now we have a registration page and we can register as you can see here we had the username, password and email. One thing I wanted to change was if the user left any of the fields blank that could result in a blank password, blank username, blank email which could be very troublesome. So what I'm going to do or what I already did was I added this section right here just before the if string length username. So you can pause it right here to copy that down and get that situated. Okay, now that we have that set, you can see if we go to register and they don't put in all the fields, it'll say please supply all fields. This way we know that they'll have a username, a password, and an email that they signed up with. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move into the styling of the website. Now, I've already gone ahead and done the styling. As you can see, it's much different than what we had in the first tutorial. I'll go over what changes I made. So we go to the index.php file. And originally, you had the header, container, navigation, and content, and the footer divs. Now those were all there. What I did was instead of having the one, two, three, four, in the header tag I typed in your game, which will show up here, whatever the title you want it to be. Then we have for the navigation and the content, we have these two inner divs, which are just there for the padding because the way I set up this layout, uh, adding and padding in the navigation and content divs screwed things up so I just added in this extra div. No real harm done so that's always a plus. And then for the footer I added this center copyright copyright logo 2011 your game. So as you can see that's right here. So now you can pause here get this situated this is how the layout's going to be for the rest of the tutorial so pause here you can copy anything down okay now that you've done that we can go over to the style.css file what I've done here was right here is this body tag and the body means that anything within the body tags on this page will have these kind of properties so I changed the background color as you can see it was white before but now I changed it to this more grayish color for the header we had the background color and the width I changed the color and size of the font which you can see by here the color and font size and then I also added in a black border which you should be able to see here now for the navigation what I did was I changed the background color a little bit. I subtracted one from the width because the width was originally 180 for navigation and for content it was 620. But since but that was with no border in between them. Since we added this border right here which you can see right here it's a little darker in this area we had to subtract one pixel because the width here was one pixel so you can pause here and copy down this stuff any changes I made here okay now that you've done that these nav div and con div you can see that they were added in here these give a 10 pixel padding on all sides which you can see here how it's pushed off from the side uh, in the first tutorial they were right next to where the div started and that just looks kind of messy so I did that I also changed 
I added the border here, I changed the background color, and then I also messed around with the footer stuff. So you can pause the video to copy this, all the changes down here. Okay, now that you have that down, there are going to be, there's going to be one thing that we're going to focus on right now, which is setting up the website layout so that we don't have to edit it as often. <coughs> right now, if we copy and pasted this into every page we had, it would, it would get annoying, say, if we wanted to change, you know, the title of your game here and here and here. You would have to edit every single page. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this up into two parts, a header and a footer. Now, what we're going to do is, as you can see, here is the main content right here. That's what we want our page to be. So if we take everything above here, we can copy and paste this into a header.php file. As you can see, I've already made the file. So if we copy and paste this, save it as header.php. Now we have just this and this to worry about. So now what we do is we take this below this three, copy and paste it into this footer.php file. So now the only things that we have to worry about is three, which is the content. What I'll show you right now is we'll go to our test page that we had Oopsie. and what we're going to do is include remember if it includes the file then you'll see that it basically throws everything into one file so if we include the header.php file along with whoopsie, the footer.php and just to make this the same as the index page, we'll echo out three. So here's our index. We can refresh it. You see what it is. And we can view the source code. That's that. Now, if we go to test.php, exact same thing. If you look at the source code, it's the exact same. So because we created these header and footer files, now if I want to change the name of the game, like in the footer part, I can just change it there and every page we have thereafter the content is just going to be where this echo line is makes it much easier for editing saves a lot of time so now what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste the header into this register.php file Whoopsie. so now if we include the header at the top and php tags and the footer at the very bottom remember that's after this content here we can go to register.php and now you see it has the layout the navigation and the register page now obviously this isn't the best registration page um, maybe we can come back to it at some other point in time but what it does right now well actually we will be coming back to it if we decide to add more features to our game but for right now it, it does its purpose. So now what we're going to do is start off with a login. Now what I'm, what I'm going to show you here is what we're going to be using for our website. What Instead of using cookies which will store information on your computer we're going to be using sessions which store things on the server. What a session is is oh I don't know it's like a it's like valet parking with your car if you go to a fancy hotel and you know you have somebody park your car for you they will give you a ticket which is essentially your session now you're done with your party and you want to leave if you don't have a ticket how do you how is the uh, I don't know butler servant person dude whatever you want to call him how is he going to know that you have a car? And also, if you don't have a ticket, or if you lost your ticket, how is he going to know where your car parked? It's a strange analogy, but that's basically the best way I can explain it. So to use sessions in PHP, 
you just have the session underscore start function. If you put this at the top of your page, it means that you can access session things in here. And part of the login is creating a user ID that will be stored in the session. So now what we're going to do is, first off, let's just, let's go to the header file. And as you can see here, we have the navigation. And what we're going to do is add some PHP tags. And we're going to say if is set dollar sign underscore session is how you call session variables. Then you have to figure out the name of the session variable. Let's just say UID for user ID. So now if there is a user ID, we're going to echo logged in but if there's not if there's no user ID or if the session isn't actually there we're going to say not logged in this is just so if your users logged in they can see the menu if not they're going to want to log in so if we refresh the page we don't have any session variable set up so as it says not logged in if we go to test and we say dollar sign underscore session UID is equal to one, there we have set up a user ID. So if we go here, it says logged in because if we set this here, you'll see that here, okay, there is a session user ID. You don't have to include this because you set it once. See, if I do that there, it's no longer there. But if I refresh the page a couple times, and even if I go to register, you can see, well, oh, my fault. Register, I forgot to add the session start. Session underscore start here. That's, that's one thing you need to have at the top of every page. So now if I refresh the page, there, you're logged in because there is a session variable. Now, sometimes you'll be on a website and you may log off after, you know, if you go away from your computer for like, you know, like a half hour, hour, two hours and come back and you're not logged in, that's because your, the web host or the server may have a default session time that expires. For example, I know a good majority of them are usually like anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes but some of them can be infinite sessions or you can also do like a remember me function that'll it won't save your session permanently but it'll work with the database to keep you automatically logged in so now that we have those session variables set up what we're going to do is we're going to start with a login page so that will be in the next tutorial, and I will see you then.